committed into our hands. And wherever we work and play, we shall also work to the glory of your holy name. On that note, we declare this training open. In the name of God the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, sir. All right, without um, wasting time, I will invite um, the Secretary of the Guild of Organists of Nigeria, South South Zone, to come and handle the proceedings. Uh, we are going straight into the training. We don't want to waste, uh, waste time. So um, I will invite um, Barrister Owens to come and introduce our Oga. Thank you. Thank you, the distinguished Vice President of the Guild of Organists, South South Zone. Um, ladies and gentlemen, once again, I join my very distinguished Vice President of the South South Zone to welcome all of us to this very important and promising to be great session. Um, I'm privileged to meet a very special person today for the first time. And But before I invite him to the stage, let me quickly recognize the presence of one of our own, he is here with his wife. I'm talking of Benebo Samuel J.K. and the wife. Please, just wave. Thank you. You're welcome. Every other member of the Guild of Organists, South South Zone here presents, we indeed recognize your very important presence. And so, without much ado, the South South Zone is indeed very, very privileged to have two distinguished personalities who have come to bless us with their wealth of knowledge as it concerns the organ instrument. This is just one of the series of the programs that the South South Zone of the Guild of Organists has put together for the benefit of her very special members. And so in the house we have I'm sure all the way from Lagos our brother Mr. Tokwe Ola Gunju is here. Please greet the house. You're welcome. And then the man who is going to take up the session to really impart on us is by no means a small man. I prefer to call him doctor, but he said I should leave it at the university. I'm a very obedient um, servant, sir. Uh, so I will obey and uh, leave out the doctor. But permit me to say, we have, and please invite to the stage, Mr. Ayo Oluranti. Just forgive my pronunciation of the name. Mr. Ayo, I was told, don't worry, it's not a hearsay, even though I was told. It's the man and the brain behind this beautiful instrument we have before us. He has put together this beautiful concept and for those of us who are in the field of law, we will say, rest is a locator. That's 
that the facts speak for themselves. And I'm sure the facts here eloquently speak for themselves. But we want to hear more from the person who is the brain behind this beauty. Once again, very humbly, may we all welcome Mr. Ayo. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, please kindly forgive me uh, to make a slight deviation from that introduction. Um, I'm not here to talk about this organ and whoever built it or whatever. I'm here to talk about organ musicianship as it affects us as uh, church organists, as churchmen, as church musicians, you know. And um, it's going to be a workshop style, nothing formal, right? Um, some of us might find the stuff that is going to come out very elementary. Some might just need it. You know, but um, so that I can connect with everybody in here, I would suggest that, I mean, I would leave it free. You can stop me as we go on to ask questions. Uh, so many years ago, I learned from one of the first companies I worked with, our manager would tell us that um, there's nothing like a stupid question that the question that goes unasked makes you a stupid person. You know. Uh, so please, if you have gray areas and uh, things you don't understand, it's just let's talk about it. And um, let's exchange knowledge within ourselves, within the room. You know. Uh, in this industry, there's nothing like um, uh, a person who has it all who knows it all you know you always tap from there tap from there and uh, you move on with it now if I may suggest because I'm not so sure we would see what is being projected very well from afar so maybe if we can move forward um, I don't know at some point maybe we can even cluster around the organ uh, I don't know about that but um, I think uh, can you see can you see that uh, well basically I just don't want you to okay Maybe you can adjust it. Okay, that's that's brilliant. That's the end. All right. Okay. As I said earlier on, um, I'm going to delve into organ musicianship. That's what I'll call it. And I find this topic very interesting because of our predicament in Nigeria and maybe Africa. You know, when uh, the great musician Mozart said the organ is the king of instruments, what instrument was he referring to? Do we know? Basically, it was referring to the pipe organ, not this digital toys. You know. But over time, we realized that um, pipe organs are not affordable, even in the American system. And then we started delving into things like digital organs, which is still okay because. I mean, it still has a bit of semblance with um, the pipe organ in terms of structure. The pedal 
is there. You have manners and divisions. But one of the saddest things that happened to us is the contraption called keyboard, Yamaha. Um, and um, the Japanese, the Asians, they capitalized on our, on our poverty to reduce church organists to keyboardists. And you go to a lot of churches today, you don't find organs. You had find keyboards. And it got worse. When prison and worship started in the late 80s, all churches wanted banned. And then the threshold of noise went up. And uh, churches didn't even see the need to have organs again. So how has that affected us? As a result, we don't have a lot of organs. And when we have organs, a lot of times we find people playing the organ like the keyboard. We find people playing. Do you get what I'm saying? Do we, do we know, we surely know that there's a difference. Or let's, let's tackle that matter. Because this is going to help us a lot. Okay. What's the difference between the keyboard and the organ? I mean, I'm talking technically now. Not in terms of, uh, we know the keyboard is just one five octave thing. Do you get it? But in terms of how it functions, what's, what, what are the major differences? Anybody? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. My name is uh, Amarike Ayokoronko. I know that the keyboard has no pedals. I also know that the keyboard has no woofer sound and other sound producing equipment. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for that contribution. Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay. Again, Mozart said the organ is the king of instrument. It said it's at a point in time where chamber music was the real thing. What do we mean by chamber music? Orchestra music, right? Where you have string ensemble, and within the string ensemble you have violin, viola, cello, double bass, right? You have the woodwind, in the, you have the woodwind ensemble, piccolo, flute, oboe, Clarinet, bass clarinet, bass flute, um, uh, bassoon, contra bassoon, right? And within that mix, we have the brass ensemble, French horn, the trumpet, the trombone, the tuba, the contra tuba. We have percussion and all sorts of things. But you see, when Mozart said the organ is the king of instrument, he was drawing a parallel between that instrument and the orchestra. The organ is an orchestra on its own. Just as you have you know, those different ensembles, right, in the orchestra, so do you have the parallels on the organ. One big area, arena of music is what we call orchestration and instrumentation, which is how you combine these orchestral instruments, right? Um, at times, you can have the strings at the background. Then the foreground, you have the trumpet. You have all kinds of permutations possible. It is exactly the same thing on the organ, as I'm going to demonstrate. You have different ensembles and our major job as an organist is to understand these ensembles one, understand the constituent instruments of these ensembles and figure out how we can make them work together and generate pleasing sound on the keyboard it's a different matter you just press a button, bam, and it gives you a sound. Isn't it? 
there's no orchestration going on. Okay, at some point you can do some layering and some... <laughs> but it has absolutely nothing to do with what we are talking about, which is registration on the organ. This, this art of combining sounds on the organ is called registration. You know, and now the problem we now have is this. More than often, you will always get in the churches, our organists, they will now mount the organ and play like the keyboard. Tutti, ba. That's it. From beginning of service to end. Crescendo pedal. Ooh. Huh? So these are the deadly impact of uh, our keyboard culture. I call it a ter it's a terrible contraption. And um, many times when I go around to people ask questions when they want to mount sound in organs, they will say, where's the volume of the organ? Organs don't have volume more. You know, this, I'm trying to draw that difference between keyboard again. The keyboard you can, uh, on the organ, you can build your tone by addition of stops, and you can build your sound, and you can build power by addition, just like an orchestra, by addition, doubling of instruments, you get more intensity, you change the time by the tone. You know, that's what we have on the organ, which is different from the keyboard. Uh, so, and then, many times to organists ask for this thing they call AP. You know what they call AP? Um, auto pedal. Uh, uh, transfer the pedal to, uh, you kill the essence of what Mozart called the king of instruments. You know, I don't know how many of you know the late Kaya Deoni. In those days when we were growing up, we would say that, look, if he could have his way, he would remove crescendo pedals from organs. That people are always abusing them. And at some point in time, where I was a bit consistent in the church, in the U.S., and I was playing regularly, I noticed that I could count the number of times in the year that I touched the crescendo pedal. You know, we need to understand what the instrument is and be able to build our own sounds ourselves. You know, there was one man called Joseph Nolan who came to give an uh, give a, a recital, opening recital, uh, inaugural recital, somewhere in Pittsburgh. And the person who built the pipe organ apologized to him that one last thing they forgot to do is to hook up the crescendo pedal. And Joseph just said, "Oh, that's a very good thing." that he doesn't even know how to use it. He said he doesn't know how to use it and that uh, he might even accidentally step on it, thinking that he's swept at that. So it's a good thing that <laughs> it's not working. You know, but f for us, that we have gotten into this culture of keyboard playing, you know, that crescendo equates to that knob on the keyboard for volume. So basically today, I'm going to plunge us into the several departments of sounds on the organ and um, get into the essence of understanding how to work with these things. But at the bottom of this registration thing we are talking about is a technical understanding of the music you want to perform. If you don't understand the music you want to perform, registration is useless. And at the bottom of this is something we call phrasing.
Can we, can, we, can we see what I have projected there? Huh? Excuse me, just a minute. I have, let me read the first part of that. As you can see, you have um, three paragraphs there. The first one goes, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy duck because it contains all of the letters of the alphabet. This sentence is an excellent exercise to use for typing practice. Huh? Let me read that again. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog because it contains all of the letters of the alphabet. This sentence is an excellent exercise to use for typing practice. Let me go to the second one. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog because it contains all of the letters of the alphabet. This sentence is an excellent exercise to use for typing practice. What's the difference? Yes, what does the punctuation bring about? It brings about pause. What does it bring about? What does it really do? And what does that do? Meaning, comprehension. Right? Okay. Now, let us focus on this too. This had no punctuation at all, right? Now, I read this again. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog because it contains all of the letters of the alphabet. Huh? The sentence is an excellent exercise to use for typing practice. Now, let us read this. The first one is a quotation. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Quotation closed. Because it contains all of the letters of the alphabet, this sentence is an excellent exercise to use for typing practice. Do you get the gist? Do you get the gist? Those three paragraphs... They have the same letters, the same words. Huh? And the positioning of the punctuation changed the meaning. This one, the first one, is totally senseless. And this, in meaning, is different from this. Can you say, can you say the difference? Huh? This one is saying... Because the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, it contains all the letters of the alphabet. What does that mean? But you have that because they are playing a big role, giving it a bit of sense. And then it says this sentence is an excellent exercise to use. But then for the last one, quote, I quote, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Closed. That's an object on its own. And then, because this quote contains all of the letters of the alphabet, the sentence is an excellent exercise to use for time and practice. Totally different. All because we have punctuations and marks giving meaning. It's exactly the same thing in music. You have to study your music you have to break it into phrases, little statements, and communicate your music in statements. There is no easier way to understand this with the modern, with um, the hymns we sing, which are already 
in strophic style, you know, in stanzas. You know, usually you have the first line as a statement, and then you breathe, isn't it? Second line, that's another statement, that's a phrase, you breathe. The third line, and so on and so forth. But at times, we have some more complex configurations. When within a line, you have maybe a comma. Do you get it? And then, you move on. Hark, hark, my soul. You know that hymn? It's not going to be hark, hark, my soul. It's going to be hark, hark, my soul. You should, tr that should be transmitted into your execution, not only in performance and singing, but on the organ. Am I making sense? So, you see, for you to go into registration and make sense out of it, you first need to study your music. Now, it is easy if you are dealing with music with text. Another good example is with our psalms. The psalms that we chant. That is even more tricky. You know, trying to break things into statements and making sense. And, but the good thing about it is that we discover that we have your court marks where the music is changing. That helps us. Do you get it? So, it's very, very important um, to understand the concept of phrasing. Because if you don't understand that, you can never ever use the organ appropriately. And number one rule is, before you mount the organ, study your music away from the organ. Don't quote me, preferably with a glass of beer or wine. But don't quote me. But just go away from the organ. Think through. As a matter of fact, um, how many of us have heard the name T.K. Phillips? T.K. Phillips. You've heard the name. Arguably the grandfather of, uh, the father of uh, church music. I mean, the, the first cathedral in Nigeria, in the Cathedral Marina, he was the uh, main organist there at some point. He studied at Trinity. Uh, the story goes that every Saturday, he doesn't do anything. He's in church, studying all the hymns, canticles for next Sunday. And he does his registration line by line, verse by verse, studying the music. You know, he, it was like the act of Levites in the Bible. They had no other thing doing. It was all just music. That kind of mentality was what he did. And he dedicated his Saturdays to that. And I understood that every Sunday before he mounted the pipe again, he would go on his knees and pray. You know. So, there's the spiritual dimension to this. When you are accompanying the organ and you want to make sense. Okay? And... There's the technical portion that we need to understand. Now, before I go into the main material, I want to ask us another question. You know, I said this is all about general musicianship. How do you feed your soul? How do you feel your, feed your spirit, your musical spirit? How do you listen to music? Do you listen to music? Do you have special set time when you listen to music? Good music that informs and teaches. Anybody? How do you listen to music? On your phone? In your car? On your computer? How? 
Anybody? We don't listen to music. <laughs> Interesting. Thank you, sir. Most times I listen to music while driving. Good. And uh, I would say most times too I drive alone. So I can drive distances when the music is playing. And I take time and sometimes I meditate as the singing goes on. Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay, this is what I'm hitting at. If you want to be a good organist, you need to find a means of listening to organ music, church music, through a system that will give you flat response. How many of us have been to the studio before to record? And when you record, you listen to what you hear. If you're given a CD, you plunge it in your system, it's different. The quality is different. Why is that so? In the studio, they're using, you know, monitors that give you flat response. It doesn't dilute, it doesn't color. If you want to build your ears to understand each stop on the organ, how they work, you need to listen to good recordings on good playback system. Am I making sense? Without that, all you will be engaged with is notes. And that's why a lot of people don't know the difference between keyboard and organ. It's just, they just listen to events that happen, pitch, rhythm, in the space of time. But the concept of what is right or wrong in sound, they don't have it. Am I making sense? So you need to cultivate the habit of no one listening to music and good music to inform and then with the right instrument. Now, what, what are the right things? Um, not your phone. Forget it. It's even better you invest in a professional headset like studio people use. These things might be expensive, but for you to be a good organist, you have to invest in yourself. Yeah? I don't believe there is nobody who, can, who would save for one year and not be able to buy one of these equipment. I use more of headphones. You see, these headsets, they go as low as 16 hertz frequency at the bottom. That means that they can sound the 32 foot stop on the organ because you see you will listen to certain organ music if you listen on to the with the wrong equipment these details you will never understand if i give you material to go and read about 32 foot stops and things like that you will just be you, you can't relate with it but if you get one of these good headsets that can go that low with noise cancelling, you know, boom, boom. Once you put them on, it cuts out all the sound outside and it gives you that flat response. That is when you can relate with an organ. Without that, you are relating with a keyboard. That's the truth. Uh, now, you can invest in uh, reference monitors like studio people use they have very small ones even there's one by the Beringer. it's very good they call it truth get just to make out time every sunday evening listen to correct music you know it's just like going to church to feed yourself spiritually to pray feed yourself huh? and if you can change the stereo system in your car you know you can get very nice speakers that will do all this stuff you know I try to listen to that's the number one thing if I want to buy a car 
People think I'm mad. I check the sound system. In fact, I, res I research that before I go. You know, these cars, they come with premium. They come with standard. You know, if I find a car that has pioneer speakers, uh -huh, we are talking. Do you get it? Priority for me. Because I spend a lot of time driving. You know, and I want to listen to a psalm chanted, and I want it to take me to where it should take me to. Do you get it? So, you see, let me tell you this. The major difference between top-notch organists and amateurs, they're not big things, though. They're not being able to play that. No, no, no. There are very little details like this. Very, very tiny little details like this. Uh-huh. Apart from the time you are devoting to training and things like that, what are the little things that are feeding you? That are feeding your musical spirit? Very, very little tiny tips like this. Any question? Any question? Okay. So, let's go into the organ. I have the disposition for this organ. Here. Can we see this? Can we all see this? Um, this organ, looking at the disposition, You can see there's a three manual organ. The great division, the swell division, the choir division, the pedal division. And if you're very vast with design of organs, you will discover that this top list has everything you need to express yourself as an organist and even delve into a major repertoire for the organ. Can I ask? What's the very significant thing about the swell organ? I'm talking generally, not with respect to this generally for an organ what 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 is so special about the swell anybody okay i'll tell you yes sir what thick now most of us may not be very conversant with the word swell Please throw more light on the word swell. So that when you are cause of your differentiating the two, we get it very well, sir. Now, the, the swell is one division of the organ. On this instrument, you have this three manual configuration, right? The top one is the swell division. That's the swell organ, right? The middle one is the great. And this one is the choir. Do you understand? Okay. Maybe I should just go on into this. Now, each division, they have specific sounds. What you can achieve here on the swell is not what you can achieve on the great and is not what you can achieve on the choir. They have different roles and we need to understand what these different roles are for us to be able to get the right sound of the instrument. And for us, we don't need to go so far. Looking at this, look at great, look at swell, look at choir. Ordinarily looking at this, we can see the stop names. They are different, right? Right? Look at great here. We have sub principle 16 footage, major principle 8, half flute 8 we have swell, but done 
and so on. They're different. Now, what that means is that they are different instruments. In quote, do you get it? Having different sounds, which you need to understand individually and understand how to combine them. Now, that concept is not unique to this organ. That's what you find on all organs. Do you get it? It's a principle. That's what you find on all organs. Now, the stop names might differ, but generally they all follow the same principle. Now, I don't want to assume. Do we understand these figures? 16, 8, 4, the Roman numerals. Then at times we get into some fractions. Do we understand them? No. Now on the pipe organ. This bottom note. The principal eight is a pipe. And that pipe is eight feet long. Okay? And for us to get this other sound, the length of the pipe decreases. Do you get it? From eight. So, any stop you find with eight in front has a basic C sound with pipe eight feet long. That's what it means. You know. Now, if you now have something that has four feet, it means on the same note, it's going to sound an octave higher. All right? Let me demonstrate that. Now, I am playing the major principle eight on the great middle C right if I want to generate the same sound using a four footage I'll play middle C below and get the same sound the same pitch range do you get it now what that means is this if I have the eight foot on middle C and I add the octave four, it's going to sound the C an octave higher on the same notes. So this is principle eight, and I'm adding the four to it. Can you hear the difference? Uh, let me play a chord. If I add the four, I'm still going to go into that. Now, you have Roman numerals. You have four there, you have two. These are very special stops. We call them mixtures. They had brilliance to the organ as a good organist when you first mount an organ check the mixture before you use it because the mixture can mess you up yeah so what's unique about the mixtures these are the stops 884 they're single pipes or single pipe rather sounding for each note we call that a rank. But for mixtures, you have more than one. So, if you find a figure like this, two, it means two ranks. You have two sets of pipes sounding at once. Right? And usually, they're pitched between unison and a fifth. Right? Okay. Now, if you have a mixture with five, that means five ranks. Automatically, that's telling you that you're getting more sound. Huh? Okay. 
And you can find that in the great division. You can find that in the swell division. On very big organs, you find them on the choir divisions. Let's see what that does to our sound. Now, we had all these eight fours. Uh, let me do that on... Um, Now, this is the sound without the quaint, the rush quaint, too. With it, you have this. Right? And then, with the five, you have a bit of a sound. Can you hear that? So, you need to understand the character of all this. And in, in the next, I mean, I'm moving on to talk about families now, for us to understand characters, how to think about, about these stops, how to process them, how to use them. Right? Now, there are two categories of pipes on the pipe organ we have the flues f l u e these are pipes that are made of wood or metal and they speak flawlessly like a whistle you know when you blow into a whistle then the second category we call them reeds. They have what we call, how many of us play, you know about um, oboe? You know about uh, saxophone that have reeds? Exactly. These pipes have reeds that create a buzzing sound. Huh? And let's say, let's, for now, let's say harsh sound. So those are the two categories of pipes. And all stops on the organ they are either flues or reeds on this specific organ all the marked stops highlighted in black uh, can you see that they are the reeds they are the reeds and all the others are the flues What's the difference? This is the flu sound. Okay. Now I'm going to play this reed sound on the grate. Can you hear the difference? in contrast to this sound. Huh? Okay. Now, let me play this reed here, which you have on the swell. That's the oboe with the horn and then with the clarion. Actually, that's, that's clarion, not clarinet. Contrast that to flu sound. Now, on the choir, you have, note this, trumpet eight, trumpet eight. So that means you have trumpet here, you have trumpet here. <coughs> Let's see the difference. <coughs> Uh, compare that to this trumpet. So, basically, <clears throat> one thing you need to understand about stops on organ is that there must be distinction in all the stops. No two stops must be duplicated. No two stops must 
sound like. Do you get what I'm saying? You know, I'll demonstrate that in, in, uh, in more details. <clears throat> then you can see in the pedal division that you still have reeds there. You have the person, which is um, the German name for trombone. And then you have the trumpet. Can you hear that? Now, let's compare that to this sound. Principal bass wood. Which is a flu sound. Can you hear the difference? Can you hear the difference? As against and this So basically, you have to understand that the reeds come with a buzz. Do you get it? The flutes clean flutes like sound. Right? Although there's a bit of variation to that when we start thinking of talking about strings. So the important thing here is this. You should know when to use your shotgun or your AK-47. Do you get it? You just don't mount the organ and fire your AK-47 all the time. Ba, 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 bo, 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 bo. Hmm? You need to understand each and think of how to combine and make sense. Any questions before I go on? Any questions? Please, as I admonished us earlier on, um, there's nothing like a stupid question. The question that goes unasked makes you a stupid person. So please, don't, don't be shy. Huh? Please. Uh, <clears throat> now, I've already said we have two major tone types, the flu and the reeds, right? And in within that, we now have families, just as we have families in the orchestra. You know, you have the string ensemble, you have the woodwind ensemble, you have the brass, percussion, keyboard, right? And for us on the organ, we have strings, which try to emulate um, a string orchestra. Emulate, you know, when we say emulate, now gives us a feel. You know, the same affect, that's the word. Right? Not exactly like strings, you know. We have the family, then we have the flute family, which actually emulates flute, orchestral flute. Right? Now, then we now have the family of Darpesans that really define the organ and makes the organ a unique instrument. The organ is the only instrument that has that type of sound, that Darpesan sound. At times, uh, it's called principal on some organs, and the French, we call it monte. Now, so... The strings, the flutes, the darpesins, they are all flues. You know, I said we said either flu or reed. Right? So, apart from those three families, we now have reeds that we've already talked about. Reeds, they remain reeds. So, let's talk about the strings. On this specific organ, there are only three string stops. Gamba, Salisunal, Celeste. Now, on some other organs, you will find complements of that in other divisions. But on a miniature organ like this, you will always if you don't find strings anywhere else, 
on the organ, you will find strings in the swell division. Which brings me to that my question again. What's the big deal about the swell organ? What makes the swell organ a big issue on the organ? This top division. When you play the piano, you know the piano is called piano forte, right? It's capable of through touch, through touch, you can create different dynamics. Soft, moderately soft, forte, fortissimo. You all agree with me? On the keyboard, you can do the same thing with touch, right? On uh, flute, you can do that with control of air, right? On strings, the way you move, you can create all those expressions. So how do you create expression on the organ? <laughs> you beat it. Huh? How do you create expression on the organ? Huh? That's why we have those pedals we call expression pedals. Now, sometimes in the middle of 19th century, it was the great organ builder Cavalli Cole working hand in hand with our great organist Caesar Frank that first came about this expression for the organ although at that point in time too um, Walker Walker too was doing something similar in Germany between 1850 and 1900 was when this took place before then the organ that we had is what we call the classical organ what's back played and the only form of expression possible for back was through addition of stops. You know, like in the orchestra. Huh? This is what I mean. Now, I have just a single sound, a single stop. And I want to make it bigger by stop addition. So that was what we had before the middle of the 19th century. If you want to play soft, you just pick a few stops. And then if you want it to be louder, add stops. That's just adding. What I did just now was just starting from here. And I started adding all these stops. And when I wanted to get soft, I took them off. Right? Now, that's one division. Hmm? You can do the same thing on the swell division. You can do it on choir. You can do it on the pedal. And you can couple all of that together to have a terrace sound. Bigger, 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 bigger sound. You, guys, you couple this to this, this to that, you know. But then, Kabbalah Ko was like, we can do better. And you know what he did? The pipes for this swell organ he enclosed them in what we call um, the Venetian blinds you know the kind of Venetian blinds we have in our houses you know that open and close they are very common now they used to be office windows before we use them at home so he did he will put all those pipes in a box and we have those windows so when this expression pedal is opened the windows will open and the sound will come out and you can do that to have another form of expression going from soft to loud and when you want to shut down you close the, the, the pedal and then the blinds you know shut so that's different from adding stops, so apart from 
adding stops physically you can now use expression pedal it's not volume yeah? and on the organ you must for it to be an organ yeah? two manual organ you must have a swell division under expression do you get it because that's where you can give expression to your playing on the organ am i making sense am i making sense so that is why i personally i say the swell organ is the powerhouse of the organ and then for most organs that we are used to especially english organs it is the swell that has the most in terms of variety of stops and this we can see clearly here number one you can see that it has more stops than the great it has more stops than the choir it's because it's under expression do you get it and in that in this division alone you have more variety than all others because you have this first stop is a flute that burden this is a principal that's another family you know i said we have strings we have flutes we have dapesons right we have reeds right this flute this dapeson all these three strings this flute this that person flutes this that person all these reeds do you get it so that's why that instrument the swell instrument is very 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 important to your organ playing that is why you can easily there's something when we examine our students in organ we talk about control of the organ if you want to learn the secret of controlling your organ and being a meaningful organist then you must master your swell for me whenever i go on an organ the first place i go to is the swell when i try out the stops i will know whether i want still want to play the organ if the swell is not you know making sense i'll just i walk away from the organ straight up okay so for us to understand this i will demonstrate the swell to you and i will start with the strings that i talked about now this is the you have the strings under expression opening the box you get this okay now you have the flute under expression opening it now you have the da pacing with the mixture opening it and closing it And then the last family, the strings. Now, in your playing, just as with an orchestra, you can combine flutes with strings, strings with dapesons, and so on and so forth. So let us see a bit of some com combination with strings combined with flutes remember i told you that before 1850 it was by addition of stops that we had expression so that rule still holds in addition to the fact that you can open and close the swell organ now strings alone with flutes added now strings and flutes 
with that persons now with reeds and then you have your full swell so what's the impact of that let's see I quickly want to control this organ while playing the hymn. It is well with my soul. That's the power of the swell in being able to control your instrument. You can quickly go from to express yourself, you know, and it's not as if you got, all you can do is go from soft, you know, to loud. You have the middle ground, isn't it? So I did that with the, without the use of tutti, crescendo, you know, just adding stops because I'm taking into consideration the character of the families. Do you get it? Now, before I move on, again, to understand the power of the swell, this topmost instrument controlled by there, usually on organs you have some pranks that um, come into the design of the organ. We call them Intramanual couplers. Intramanual couplers. What are these intramanual couplers? Um, that's not showing well there. Yeah, that's what you have at the bottom here. The swell octave, the swell sub octave. You see, these toys can make you, you know, change your sound quickly if you know how to use them. What does the swell octave coupler do? Anybody? Anybody? Swell octave or octave coupler. What it means is that any note you play on any stop is going to add another one octave higher then the sub anything you pull it will add do you get it now that trick was used in organs that you know budget organs you don't have enough pipes because you're supposed to have one pipe per stop per key so once you don't have that take for example look at this disposition again If you look closely at the swell division, you see the footages you have there, they're 16, 8, 4. Right? There are no twos, no ones. Why? Because you have this swell octave coupler. 
because for any of these eight footages if you put on the octave curve plot it will add four to it if you put on any of these fours put on the coupler bam octave mixture it does exactly the same thing so now what i've done so far in demonstrating the swell i have not even touched them i've not touched the um intramanual couplers now let me do that and you see the difference so, so i have my swell sound complete swell sound without the intramanual couplers now i add the swell octave can you hear that without the swell octave you hear this the swell octave on then with the swell of sub octave which adds the 16 footages all on the swell alone and all that sound you can tame in the twinkling of an eye so tell me why do you need tutti on the organ huh so why do you need uh, crescendo what exactly you just need to understand your swell that's it. understand am i making sense huh are you with me if you're not with me just tell me that idiot we don't understand what you're saying huh i think we should take a break <laughs> to digest all this right huh so to round up to this point that we've got into If there's nothing you are taking away from this workshop, take with you the full comprehension of what the swell organ is. The powerhouse of the organ, the swell, what it can do is enclosed. Do you get it? And then you have a broad range, all the families, all there. And you can quickly bam, bam, bam without losing any sweat any sleep we are organists i think we should listen to organ music now right so i want to call oh don't worry let, let, let me save you the stress um gentlemen and ladies i think what we have enjoyed so far demands of a round of applause I told us that the man we have is the brain behind the instrument, but we didn't come for the instrument, we came for that brain which is behind the instrument. And I'm sure the little but very significant moment we have had with our speaker has been of a tremendous impact on us but they say all works and no play makes somebody a dull person at this point we need to relieve ourselves a little of the so much heavy load we have um have put into ourselves and on that note May I have 
the singular honor and privilege to invite our brother to give us some relief on the organ. I am talking of no other person but our own brother who has come all the way from Lagos. My friend, Tokwe, please come and give us small touch on the organ. A round of applause. Hello everyone. Um, so right now I'll be playing two pieces. Right, the first one is a very short prelude, very good for um, before the service begins, just to bring the people into the mood of worship. All right, it lasts for about two minutes, and in this prelude, um, the sounds you will hear will be the sound from the diapason, eight and four nothing beyond that and we can see how beautiful we'll be able to express between that simple sound and the second piece i'll be playing is a hymn improvisation on um Blenwen, love divine all right and um here i will build up from the strings into the big sounds into the reeds of the organ where i blow up the organ entirely it's not going to catch flames anyway <laughs>
Bravo, bravo, bravo. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, a round of applause to our brother Tokbe. I'm sure this is a practical aspect of what we have been discussing. I was keenly watching Tokbe as he was practically demonstrating what Dr. Ayo was telling us here, building the stops, using the expression pedals, um, adding to the stops, opening, the, opening and closing the windows. I'm sure a whole lot of you even saw more than I did, but that was a wonderful performance of the Blowin. Thank you for that wonderful performance and uh, having enjoyed that brief moment. I call it brief because uh, I don't know whether others felt the same way I did. I would have, um, if I had my way, um, really sanctioned that uh, Mr. Tokwe should continue. But I'm sure um, Dr. Ayo has some more loaded for us and um, after today I'm, I'm very optimistic that a whole lot of us will go to our various churches um, being different uh, stocks of organists and I'm sure um, our congregations will begin to wonder where did you come from? Where have you gone to? God helping us um, the spirit and the beauty of organ playing, that very unique culture once again will be instituted. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, may I, with um, honor, once again invite our brother, Dr. Ayo, to continue to load us with his world of knowledge. Welcome back, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Um, Uh, from my experience as um, a university teacher, uh, I know that um, in one sitting you don't you don't bombard your students with too much information, or else <laughs> they will go home with nothing. You know. Um, I hope at some point I'll be able to have maybe a follow-up session. You know, there's, uh, we just talked about the swell building up sounds and things like that. There's still a lot more for us to understand. But I want to leave us with one thing. Uh, up till now, we understand the concept of all this flu versus reeds, right? The different um, uh, families from strings what they should sound like, the flutes, um, the darpesons, the reeds, how you can add, subtract. One secret I want to leave you with is that in terms of harmonics, this is not physics. At times, you don't want a big darpeson sound on your organ, but in dissecting the diapasons, what do we have? The harmonics for flutes and strings. So technically, when you combine flutes and strings carefully, you get diapason sound. And that's, that's one of the tricks in this swell division here, because it has only one diapason, which is the Geigen uh, diapason. Let me just show you that briefly. Uh, yeah, you see that there, that Geigen principle sound, there's the sound. Now, the strings you have there, Gamba, Salisurino, Celeste, if you combine with the flute there, 
will give you another kind of that person. Let me do that now. I'm combining the gamba, salicinal, and flute. That gives you a full body darpison sound as against. So you discover that there's that subtle difference in tone, which is very, very important. So there's still other things that are uh, talking points with this. But I want, you to, I want to leave you with this important thing, which I started with. The quick brown fox job survived the later, blah, 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 blah. How do we connect it to registration? How do we connect the concept of structure in music, the phrasing, to this registration? You have all these sounds on your swell organ, on your great organ, on your choir organ. How do you combine? When do you know when to change? When do you know when to add stops? How do you know when to subtract stops? When all this addition of, of stops, addition, subtraction of stops, they lead to either of two things. A change in timbre, you know, a change in tone, or intensity. So how do you know when to play these things? One of the great greatest hallmarks of bad organist number one we'll pick one sound from the beginning of a hymn and use that sound till the end tutti yeah. then they might start soft and in the middle of uh, the song they just realize that oh they need more power not, not, they don't care where you are they just put in the tutti Bam. Yeah. the secret to it is this Figure out, for starters, figure out your shape, your phrasal shape. And for elementary thinking, for each line, right, have a sound strategy. Your second line, you break. Your, do you know how to break your phrase on your organ? You lift up your hands completely. Usually at that point when you lift up your hands completely, you can quickly change your registration. And then when you resume, it's a new sound. Then you can have a smoothness. Am I making sense? You must be very exceptionally good for you to change your sound in within your phrase. If you're going to change your sound in your phrase, then you are going to add stops or take stops in such a way that there's not, you're not going to have, encounter a road bump. 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 It will be a kind of gradual, subtle thing. Let me try, um, let me think of a hymn. Okay. And you will see how I will break my phrases and introduce new stops. How many phrases? Huh? Four phrases, right? How many times did I change my sound? Huh? Did you did you get what I'm saying? At the at the end at the end of each phrase, I lifted. I you know it's like breathing, and that is this is what we tell our organ students that sing your lines when you are playing the organ. Sing your lines. Where do you breathe naturally? Where you breathe naturally, lift your hands. Phrase the music there. And that gives you the window of opportunity to do what? Change your sound. You get it. Let me, let me do that again.
That's a perfect example of how. Huh? What? <laughs> Do you understand this? So, basically, it all boils down to this. That how do you want to punctuate your music? Now, it's not all the time that your punctuation comes at the end of your phrase. Now, if it's a hymn you're, you're playing, it's easy because you follow the text. And you can see, at times, some, some lines, they carry over to the, to the next line. And you tell your choristers, single breath. Isn't it? You know, you do the same thing on your game. So this is why you have to study. So we are not, it's not a rule of a thumb for you to say every four, four lines. As a matter of fact, at times, you might use the same registration for one, for one whole verse. Do you get what I'm saying? But the point is, you must have a strategy for your hymn. If you're playing, even if it's um, a solo you're playing on the organ you must break things down like this that how do you want to communicate your statements then once you understand that the next thing is how do I make my organ speak how do I make my organ speak now one point where we run into trouble again is when we're dealing with hymns that have you know when the harmonic rhythm is zero Harmonic rhythm means the harmony is not changing. You know, you are repeating chords. Ah? Do you change your registration? Do you articulate? Um, let me think of one. Um, aha. We know this tune, Aurelia. trying to make here is that the same type of articulation you use at the end of your lines might be what you are going to use on the basis of each harmonic movement. So what I played initially was rubbish. If I really want to make sense, because the harmony is not changing, it should go. Do I understand? That's how the concept is written. How you want to be able to differentiate what you do with what you want to articulate a whole line. Am I making sense? The same thing goes for this game. One of the things where our explanation, we get, it's easy, it's easy for you to get it mixed up. Why you are explaining each repeated word with the line? On that note, I leave you with God. Thank you very much.
I'm sure we can clap more than that. <laughs> Gentlemen and ladies, it's been a wonderful moment with Dr. Ayo and our brother, Sokbe, feeding us with good sound and indeed wealth of knowledge, which is going to spur our organ playing hereafter, I'm sure. Before we call it a day, we've had a good deal of talk, and uh, it will just be wise that um, perhaps a few of us make comments on what we have had so far or questions or questions um, so that we don't shut ourselves out completely and um, if anybody has anything anything from what we have learned so far to ask uh, can we just can you just indicate okay I think I have um, two hands did I see a hand at the back okay three hands uh, we have three persons where's the other microphone okay let's start with um, the person here after the questions um, I would um, implore our own very senior brother um, the name of Samuel JK to make a few comments before we take the vote of thanks. Good evening, everybody. Thank you, yes. My name is Abonge Nicholas. I want to know the difference between digital organ and pipe organ. Um, the pipe organ is a, is a mechanical instrument mechanical in the sense that some of us would call it box of whistles do you know when you blow into a whistle you set up air in the in the in the in the whistle and sound is generated it's simple physics that's what the pipe organ is all about you have box of um, I mean you have wings I mean sorry pipes mounted on a box of wind so whenever you press to press a key, air is allowed into the pipe and there's sound. Now the physics of it goes into other things like um, this, uh, the attack sound, which is different from the steady sound, steady, steady state sound. Because it's just like when you want to blow a whistle. Initially, you know, there's that attack and then eventually it gets, the waves get steady. You know, that's the principle of the pipe organ. Huh? Now, the digital organ is a computer. It's initially we had electronic organs, and uh, in the 70s, digital organ came into our life. What's a digital organ? You have an operating system, you have a software system, and that software system is a synthesis. It tries to capture how that mechanical thing that happens with pipe organ happens. So it's all a matter of algorithms. Now for digital organ, we have majorly um, sampling technology and we have all sorts of real estate modeling uh, technologies. You see, sampling is basically recording existing sounds of pipes, treating them, you know, and you play it back just like having your keyboards, you know. Then you have some other computer intensive uh, modeling systems which tries to model the each aspect of how pipe tone is generated, you know. Now, what's the major, major, mega difference between the pipe and uh, digital organ? The pipe organ in voice, tuning and everything is an imperfect instrument. And that is what makes it what it is. Unfortunately, the digital organ is a computer. It's too accurate. 
That's the basic difference. I hope I answered the question. Go on. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, the next. Okay, sir. Thank you very much for the lecture. I would like you to help us and throw some light on some of those stops that have fractional uh, food, some read stops that has fraction. Apart from the four food, eight food, there are some other stops that have fractions. I don't know if, if I'm correct. I stand to be corrected. So I would like you to help us and throw some light on that. Then secondly, I would also like you to help us and throw light on the use of tremulants. Tremulants, because each of the divisions have their tremulants. And sometimes some of us are a little bit confused on how to use the tremulant also. Then uh, I would also like you to help us on uh, so I'm trying to record it last thing I want to actually say. Apart from these few things I've, I've said now, if I remember the third one, I will bring the, the question down. Thank you, sir. Do I have one final question? Let me just record it properly. I, I hope, you, I hope uh, you will not uh, forever hold your peace. I've almost forgotten your question. Too. The first one, uh, mu mutation stops. Yes. Now, mutation stops, they work just like mixtures. I, for those who were here earlier on, I said the basic sound, the basic sound created by that person, middle C, I mean, bottom C. How, how long is the pipe? Eight feet, right? And we now say, if anything happens to that, maybe that eight feet becomes four feet. What does it do to the tone? An octave higher. So things work in whole figures, eight, four, two, one, then backwards, 16, we add a lower pitch, an octave higher. Now, when you have a pipe that has a fraction, that means it's not adding or subtracting an octave. It's either adding a third, and that is what you get from the tiers, which is one, three, five. I mean, one three fifth. Huh? That will add. So let me demonstrate it. The eight fourths add things like this. Huh? But when you have a quint, a quint will add a fifth. And that is usually two, two third. And that stop can, at times it's called Nizad. At times it's called, um, there's another name for it. I can't remember now. But instead of adding octave, it adds. So each time you play a note, instead of hearing a clean note like that, you hear. Do you get it? Now, usually what you have added, a fifth, a third, or an octave. The Larry God adds a third. I mean, the Larry God adds a fifth too. Higher. Like two octaves higher. So, that's the ministry of the mutations. Now, the mutations now can now be built on either the flute or the diapason. So that you have to figure out. So it's the same thinking for mixtures. Mixtures do their multi ranks, like I explained earlier on. So most mixtures, they add either um, a fifth or an octave within the first octave, then the second octave too, it can do the same thing. But one of the things that made uh, Father Willis very, very popular was that he introduced into mixtures the use of thoughts. You can imagine. So, in some of his mixtures, you, in one note, you can hear something like this. Just one note. We sound three notes. And that would be a three rank. Am I, am I 
connecting, you know. So, what are the uses of mutation stops? You can use your mutation stops to build a cone, for example. A four rank, a five rank cone, you combine um, the chairs, you combine um, uh, the feet, uh, like a quint, uh, you combine um, a four foot, eight foot, and that will give you a five rank one. You know, so, but I hate to say this. Um, somebody called me and said, a stop on the organ has distuned. I said, oh, really? I said, um, the uh, 10 2 thought resultant quints on the pedal division. I said, no, it has not distinct. It is adding a fifth. So when you use these mutations, you might think there's some distortion or distuning. No, they're adding either a third or a fifth. So you have to be very careful how you use them. Okay? Now, Trimland. There is, to the best of my knowledge, there's no rule of the thumb to how to use Trimland. You just need to figure out what works. I mean, just like, I mean, there are ground rules to registration, but really, each organ has its own idiosyncrasy and you just have to understand what will be the impact of treatment. But if we're talking about conventional organ playing repertoires and things like that, um, treatments are called into use, especially with French works. They come into use a lot with strings, especially when you have the full complement of the intra uh, Intra manual couplers. The effect is something that, you know, it defines French music. And that's what you have for this registration. That's with the stimulant and the intra manual coupler. And um, extending that to other parts of the division, you have this. And another thing which makes it so French is the fact that you usually have the resultant bass added to it on the pedal. That is the third second, and that's where you hear the rumbling. On organs, there is the speed of tremolence. You can have these tremolence that are very, very wavy. And if you use them with flutes, then your organ will start sounding like a gospel organ or a keyboard. Do you get it? Is that bad? Is that right? Is that wrong? I don't think so. It all depends on what you want to achieve. But... I will caution you, when the choir is singing, be careful with the use of tribulants, especially when the depth is so much, it can mislead. You know, so it's just a matter of you understanding your instrument and achieving the kind of sound. You are the, you are the sound designer, so to say. You need to create the sound. You see, the most important thing, the most important thing, like I've been saying, and which I want everybody to go away with, don't be a keyboardist on the organ. Huh? Don't be a keyboardist on the organ. Don't, don't play the organ like you are playing a keyboard. Huh? Just choose one sound and stay with it. Huh? Look for tutti. Da. If I can have my way, I will ban tutti on organs. My organ students, I tell them, don't touch tutti. Don't touch crescendo pedal. I want, to, I want your mind to work. All these stops, they are beautiful. Do you get it? It's just like having 
a pool of workers in a work system. Huh? You want teamwork, isn't it? Huh? You do your contribution, you do your contribution, you do your contribution. You do you get it? You will bring out the best. Then you'll be talking of efficiency of the system. Then you'll be talking of effectiveness of the system in terms of your product. It's the same thing with the organ. How can you have 30, 20, 48 stop organ and then you just go on duty? Bam! And you are dancing on the organ. You think you are playing the organ. You are fooling yourself. Or oh, you just went to the, go to the crescendo pedal. Bam! So think and be genuine. How do you combine your flues and your, and your, and your reeds, your strings, and so on, your mutations, your tremulants? Find a very interesting way. Spend time on your organ. Spend time to understand your organ. Huh? Every organ, you can get something good out of it. All right. So there's no rule of the tongue. I hope I answered your question. What's your last question? Thank you. I think he has just recalled the question. Okay, sir. In building a foundation for in building a yeah, a foundation, are there stops? Let me put it this way: Are there stops necessary, and the ones that are not necessary in building a a kind of foundation to introduce a work? That's what I mean. I want to introduce a hymn. Are there rules that says maybe these are stops to be used, or let me say, uh, eight foot must be there, four foot principle must be there? Are there things of that nature? And are there also stops that we should not use in building our foundational sounds? Then finally... Wait, 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 wait. Let me answer that one. The worst thing that can happen to us as an organ, organist is to, is to be pedantic. You know, work like a machine. Uh, this is this, this is this, this is this. Now, there's something you want to confuse. When we use that expression, foundation stops, it has a meaning. It has to do with basic stops of eight footage, at times four footage, and usually flutes, strings, and day persons. Reeds are not included. You know that piece that Tokwe played, the first one, he made use of foundation stops extensively. Do you get it? Now, don't use that to think, oh, what are the foundation stops you need to introduce? No. It doesn't work that way. I mean, it's just like when we say plenjo on the organ. Plenjo just means bringing, you know, it's a chorus on the organ. You know, the same thing with foundation. Now, when it comes to introduction of a hymn, there's no rule of the thumb. There's only one thing you want to achieve when you introduce a hymn. What is it? Clarity. You want to lead people to sing Abi. Yeah? Your choristers are already asleep. They don't remember the tune. The congregation has no idea. You want to make it so, so clear and, you know, you know, let me give you an example of what not to do when you are introducing. An example that's that's an example of <laughs> what not to do. I was trying to introduce Matradon. Let's assume it's a communion service.
Not so clear. I was doing some nonsense, nonsense stuff, uh, trying to display what I can do on the organ. You don't do that. Do you get it? Okay. Let's try something else. How clear was that? Now, all that I'm using solo. Now, what if you are not going to use a solo stop and you're going to play everything in the same manual? Then the skill of fingering comes in. Your ability, you must be able to isolate and phrase your melody distinctively. that's going right so basically the only rule to this is clarity in whatever you do and if you don't have enough resources just play unison just play unison and leave it all right okay answered your question yes sir finally sir uh, sorry uh, there are some Buttons or some stops you will see that they they wrote MIDI. I don't know I don't know the application and what it works on the organ. MIDI buttons. I don't know. I've seen it in some organ. So what is the function? I don't know its applications. Things to confuse you in the new age. Technology gimmicks, you know, so that you can keep asking questions. It's <laughs> so simple. <laughs> when when Mozart said the organ is the king of instruments, there was no MIDI. <laughs> So don't, don't lose any sleep about it. But what MIDI is, MIDI is a protocol, right, for you to connect other sounds to the digital organ. Take, for example, if you have a sound box or a tone box and you want to draw sound from that tone box and add to your organ, you know, you can do a MIDI connection to, as long as you have a MIDI interface, you have a MIDI interface between your organ and the, the sound box. Then you can now assign sounds from your tone box for, for, for the purpose of expansion on your organ. Do you get it? That is, that is it. But what I tell my students, master the organ first. Don't worry yourself about all those MIDI. There are things Americans brought into our lives to confuse us. Don't be confused. Um, thank you, Dr. Ayo. Uh, the last question will be taken by my friend. He's very troublesome. If I don't allow him, there will be crisis here. So please, uh, just accommodate his question. Dilo, I know him very well. Oh, you know him? I know him. Oh, thank, thank God, thank God. His reputation precedes him. Doc, thank you. <laughs> Doc, thank you very much. My pleasure. Um, of course, my brother has asked one of the questions on the fractional stops, but just to one very important one for me. Please, Doc, what's the functionality of um, the enclosed tap for any organ? Enclose. Enclose. Enclose the functionality for enclose. So in some organs, you see the enclosed tap, tab, tab. You know. What's the functionality? ENC. ENC. Divisional enclose, right? Huh? Divisional enclose. Uh, that means, it's so simple, that means that that division, all the stops on it, once you press that enclose, it comes under expression that is controlled under expression pedal. It's so simple. There's, there's nothing in it. I'd, maybe you were not here when I explained what happened in the 1850s, you know, uh, when, I mean, the, the essence of the swell organ. Now, let me tell you this. Over the years, the digital organ industry has bastardized the real organ art industry. Again, I repeat, when 
Mozart said the organ is the king of instruments. He wasn't referring to toys like this and all these gimmicks that we have in our lives. Do you get it? We're talking about the real instruments. Do you get it? And you go, for example, I gave a recital on St. John's organ in Cambridge College. A huge, huge four manual pipe organ built by John Manda. And it has only one expression pedal. Just this well. Do you get it? So that's the organ for real organists. There's no button that enclosed there. Uh, you, you suddenly enclose the uh, choir. Suddenly enclose, uh, excuse me. They are just toys, you know. All, all those things are toys. Don't, it's not something you should lose sleep over. Technically, the most important thing on an organ is for the swell division to be enclosed. You know, it's to be enclosed. Now, you have all these extra aids to help lazy organists who don't have control. You know, I talked about that earlier on. You know, having control over the organ. Because when you have those additional enclosed blah, 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 that means you can put the whole organ under expression. And that goes contrary to the principles of organ design. Contrary. The great organ is great for what they call it organ or I mean, work. the head organ. It never comes under expression. That is what it is. Now, the choir organ, actually the chair organ, which is a set of pipes from the days of Baroque that um, Bach would sit on. And it's a diminution of the great. It's not under expression. Then it comes with certain stops, beautiful stops, basically flutes. Do you get it? You know? And then eventually we had the fourth manual coming into our lives with solo stops. And some designers felt it should come under expression, which is understandable. But the most important thing on the organ is the swell coming under expression. You know? It is sad that in Nigeria we don't have pipe organs again. You know, because um, the, the, uh, it, it, the pipe organ culture is virtually dead. So we don't have regulators again. You know, a lot of these digital toys, they distort our thinking. They distort the real essence of the industry. But like when we were growing up, when we play all these toys, we always went back to the pipe organ. And that was the control for us, which made us understand. So yes, there are a lot of... Look... Um, a lot of digital organs today reads you don't find convincing strings you don't find convincing flutes you don't find convincing then they now have orchestral sounds synthesized string palm flute timpani eh? Eh? is that an organ <laughs> I hope I answer your question, sir. Thank you very much. A round of applause. <laughs> I said it. If I hadn't acknowledged uh, my friend and brother, Wilcox Abbey, there will be crisis here. And uh, incidentally, Dr. Ayo also confirmed that. Wilcox, thank you for forgiving me. Um, ladies and gentlemen, once again, a round of applause to Dr. Ayo. And... Um, before I call on um, our elder here, I call him our elder because as far as I'm concerned, uh, in the organ um, playing here in River State, um, Mr. Samuel Vinibo JK is an elder. He's a grandfather to so many of us. And so before I call on him to make a few comments, um, I want to... I want to, um, with leave of my vice president, our vice president, once again invite our brother Tokbe to give us small relief again on the organ. Can we um, usher him to the organ with a round of applause?
Welcome, sir. One second. So I would like to ask, um, should I? No, 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 no. I'd like to ask everyone, should I play something big or something that I build up from the scratch into like a hymn improvisation or a big piece? Big piece? Improvisation? I can only play one. <laughs> we are in River State and we are in charge. You play the small one and play the big one. How to go Baraka? Oh God. So please, thank you. All right then. So I'll play another prelude, a small one, and um, to wrap it up, I'll play a modern piece. It's called Power of Life. Just, just blow, blow the place.
That was great. I'm sure I, I, I don't need to say so much about that. That was great. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause as our brother Tokwe goes to take his seat. Um, uh, uh, Dr. Ayo, I, I'm so sorry there is a little conspiracy. Um, you know, and um, by my nature, I'm going to divulge the conspiracy to you. Um, uh, this is confessional statement. I conspired with um, um, Idala, and um, we were just conspiring. That how can um, Dr. Ayo come to this place and having spoken to us in this level of eloquence and we don't have any reason to feel his hands on the organ and we came to the grand plan that uh, is that not the wish of you, you see now what i'm saying so, so um we're just thinking that we should just have a little feel of um, dr ayo on this beautiful instrument all those who say those who are supposed to say i Again, say nay. The eyes have it. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir.
Beautiful. Beautiful. I wonder what uh, we would have missed without this grand conspiracy. Uh, Mr. Dalat, thank you so much for conspiring with me. Um, wonderful. I could see the expressions on the faces of um, your listeners, uh, Dr. Ayo, and I tell you that you were almost sending us to another realm. But thank God we are still here. We thank God. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause again to Dr. Ayo for that wonderful presentation. And it is on that note um, that I have the singular honor and privilege to invite our own elder to make a few comments on what we have um, had so far in this session. Join me as I welcome our brother, Mr. Samuel Benivo J.K., as he makes a few comments. Welcome, sir. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> well, before I commence my comment, it's not really a bit word of thanks because I know that after now, um, the organizers will as well give a vote of thanks. But I need to thank from the depth of my heart, you know, with Dr. Hayo. Honestly, in life, I used to play chess organ. I mean, a chess game, chess. You know, Kasparov, he said, what fascinates him, what fascinates me, are the subtleties of the game. Those little, little details that you may ignore. Those are the things that fascinate him in the organ. I mean, I mean on, the, on the game. So, if you, if you just ponder a bit on that little statement, it can spoil you to, to vision. Very big, bogo, wide vision. We are really privileged to have him here. Just about two hours, two hours some. But he has dropped something that if you take it very seriously, it can bring about a turning, a total turnaround. The summary of what he has shared with us is just like the culture, the organ culture, which most of us will miss it. We play the organ as if we are, we are playing the keyboard. The sum total of his tutorial hinge around the organ culture. And he said, the organ is the mother of all instruments, isn't it? Who is the mother? The mother is somebody, a woman that begets little children, isn't it? Now, let me ask a question. Of all the musical instruments that we know, which one of them is the most expensive? Single. In our own opinion, single. Which one of them is the most expensive of all musical instruments that we know? Doctor, are we correct? I was asking a question. That in all the musical instruments that we know, which one of them? Single. That was a single instrument. Single instrument. What does pipe organ? So what does that mean to us? Because today we can actually, you know, use you know value of something. We can some to some extent explain value by attaching cost to it. Why am I why am I creating the foundation to just add another dimension for us to really take? Full dearly what he has dropped for us this, this evening. Which means that the controller, the person that plays the pipe organ, the person that plays the organ, seems to also be like the most valuable, isn't it? Is that not true? I can see something when they are playing. I, uh, Dr. Ayo, I can see, I don't know what I will observe, but I notice two things calmness, dignity, body movement. The organist is a dignified person on the instrument. So it shows the charismatic is charisma. You are not proud. You understand? Even you address it, it should show. You shouldn't be on the organ and be rascal. No, 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 no. You are not organ. In fact, there are some churches in the West. They will come down. Who is that man? Ask him to come down. You are climbing the organ and you are just jumping into it. I can see I was watching. They were sitting down sliding. And when he finishes, he slide out. So what does this mean? 
the, 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 the owner, the, you, the person playing the organ, understands the value of the organ. He understands the importance of that organ. He understands that I'm playing the mother, which means I should be much more experienced. You know, those days, you should tell us that our, our elders, our mothers, where they are sitting there, what they will see. If you, you climb your rocket, you will not see, isn't it? So the organist is like expressing that. He dwelled on it. He used even the crescendo. That if you are, if you are the one manufacturer, you will remove crescendo. I've had that several years ago from Caledonia. Crescendo. That's better. One, you are even increasing the vulnerability of that organ to malfunctioning. Let me even put it that way. And we can attest to the several organs that you have around. All of them are packed up. Most of them. For me, if you ask for my opinion, I will trace that malfunction more to the user. And I can prove it. He has demonstrated it. That's what I want us to pick just to go on with because definitely what he has dropped. Because a few times there you are just laughing. But it is so deep that if you consider upon that it so critically, one encounter in life, only one encounter can bring up a change, bring about a change. Total change that you wanted. Just one encounter, which we have had this tonight. So we need to be very grateful and build on it. That's what I'm just dropping. Just one encounter and build on it. He was talking about the stuff, the foundation stuff, clarity. So many of them. So most of all, you know, because of that youthful exuberance, you know, that way that she for just wait, ah, trying to show up something.